up, guys? Why do I have a mug? I didn't have a better intro than this. That's the real reason. <laughs> so you're here for the comic book flip transition. I really should name those a lot better. What do you say we turn the page? All right, you probably know the drill by now, but just go to my buy me a coffee page, click on get this, type in your email, put in whatever amount you want. Once you have the file extracted, just go into Fusion, go over to your effects library, go down to templates, go to edit, and click on transitions. Now all I have to do is drag and drop it right in there. Just ask me to replace it. I've already done that. Now it'll show up in here and it'll show up in under video transitions on the edit page. We go over to edit, effects, video transition, under fusion transitions, right there. And I can drag and drop it onto some footage. Now I will have to turn the ends of the footage back a little bit and then I can put it on there and I can just go over, click on either of my clips, go to transitions. You are going to have to resize this to five seconds. I tried to redo this transition at four seconds. It didn't work for some reason super glitchy if you find a way to do it let me know i'd love to just know how you do it otherwise you just get blank dots now you can see it didn't make it to five seconds because i didn't trim off enough of this clip so i'm going to go ahead and remove that trim this clip back some more move it there and once i have you know two and a half seconds off of either of them i can make this five seconds and there it goes takes a second but it'll show up and it is based off anim curve so it should work with any frame rate all right but back to this i'm sure you're wondering about the cow uh, my daughter helped me pick out some of the stock footage. Gotta love stock footage. So you can drag it into here to use it on the edit page, or you can just drag it straight into Fusion, and it just comes in a single node, but you can expand it, and you have all your stuff right there. I'm not going to do a full tutorial, as this had a lot of small parts that I just had to tweak a bunch to get it working correctly. So rather, I'm just going to give you kind of the philosophy and the overview of all the parts that I have here. You obviously have our two clips. One is this guy getting slapped in the face. Uh, God love stock footage. The other was a cow. Again, my daughter helped me pick it out. So I went with it. I wanted to go from one clip, freeze it, give it that comic book look, do the page turn, and then start into the next clip. So all I did there was put in a time speed node. I put one there and I put one here. There's this time stretcher going from media to. So that time stretcher is just there to lengthen out that second clip so that the frames match up when it starts moving again. So the next thing I did was make a comic book border. Nothing too fancy. I'll zoom in here. We just have a rectangle. I have this rectangle instance and all that is doing is changing the color and the border width. So I have a white background there and then I have this black border for the rest of this. And then make it look a little bit more comic and not exact. I just add in a fast noise and displacement to give it some wobble so it's not nice and clean and smooth. And this transform is just growing it out of the frame, bringing it in, and then growing it back out. So I took that, I piped it down into my media one, I typed it down into my media two. All that's doing is bringing in the border and taking it away. What I did need to do that was a little more complicated was do a page flip. So what I needed to do was turn my first clip into a 3D plane. So I have our 3D plane, and because I didn't want this to just be reversed on the other side, I have this white background basically hiding behind it. As we roll this up, I didn't want this to just be the reverse image on the other side. That's all that's doing. Then I use this Bender 3D. What that's doing is just curling it right up. For all this stuff, I used anim curves, so it would stretch and shrink with different frame rates and potentially different lengths of the transition, but again, there's some weird bug going on with that. So I put that on the amount of the bend as well as the angle, because I wanted this to angle up just slightly. I didn't want it to roll straight across, starts at one end, rolls up over, and rolls back around. Also added in this transform, there's a little bit left on the screen, so the transform is slightly moving that off to the side. And then I have the clips laid over top of each other. Since I have these merged, I have my foreground and my background, but this foreground image is just getting folded up, revealing the background. So normally you would need a dissolve to do a transition, and I do have a dissolve. You do have to have that if you're going to just drag and drop it onto a timeline. But the actual transition isn't being made by the dissolve, it's being made by this transform and bender 3D. So that's really pretty basic. That's just our basic page flip. I added on a border. Now we will need to give it that comic book look. And the main power horse for that 
is abstraction. So if you ever mess with that, it just gives it these lines. And it doesn't look super great now. So what I did to make it even better is I threw on a color corrector and I just cranked the saturation way up. And then to give it some extra polish, what I did is I piped it into an edge detector, find more of the edges, more of the lines. I took a luma keyer to get rid of that background and then a color corrector to change it black. And then I took these two and I just overlaid them on top of each other. So let me show you the difference. So this is just with abstraction. This is with the saturation up and a few more lines from that luma keyer. I'll zoom in and I'll show you the difference here. So the abstraction loses a lot of detail. I wanted some more of that detail back in. So that's what that edge detector and that color corrector line is doing. And then of course we have the dissolve, which is how I'm able to just drag and drop that right onto two clips onto the timeline. And it'll grab one as a foreground, grab another as a background. And what's going on with this anim curve is it's basically applying these abstraction effects and then taking them back off. So off, on, off. And it's not actually overly complicated. It is, however, computer intensive. So be warned, if you want to run this, I would suggest going to your playback, timeline proxy mode, go down to quarter resolution. There are a few things that I had to tweak in there. That's why I don't have too many controls. I do have some abstraction strength, iteration strength, edge strength, and all that. So you can tone it down a little bit. But you do have a full composition and you can change it however you like. If you'd like to see some other stuff that I made, go ahead and click a video here. And we'll see you next time. It's like 95 degrees in here. Am I sweating? Does it look like I'm sweating? I'm sweating. Ooh, the camera's getting warm. Not good. <laughs>